Welcome to the Magical Medicals Podcast. I'm your host, Buddy Abrahams. And I'm Terry Allen. A show about the moments that changed people's lives forever. Welcome to the Magical Medicals Podcast. I'm your host, Buddy Abrahams. And I'm Terry Allen. And today we have a special guest, Aaron William Perry, that we have, founder of One Earth. Aaron, welcome so much and thank you so much for joining us on our podcast today. Hey, thank you, buddy. And thank you, Terry. It's a real pleasure to visit with you today. Yeah, we just wanted like to explain that how we, we connected was our good friend Kerry in the UK, which I think you were on their podcast. Uh, is it Divas? Yeah, Divas That Care, that's right. That's and uh, correct. Yeah, it, it was a, such a wonderful conversation. And, um, you know, especially being a, a man invited to such a discussion was, I think, a, 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 an extra privilege. Well, yeah, well, she, she mentioned it to me. I mean, Kerry has never, ever sent anyone our way. And then she said, oh, I've got this right. This guy fits perfectly for your podcast. And then sent it over. Then I said, okay, I'm going to have a look. And then, you know, I only saw the book cover and read a little bit and it had already got me anyway. And I thought, let me just go on a little bit further, you, you know. And then when I saw Why on Earth, and I was like, oh, my God, are you for real? And then obviously our girlfriend, um, good friend here, Katie Cleary, has uh, a new documentary called Why on Earth. But it's all intertwining to do with the environment and the animals and Mother Earth and everything. So uh, I just wanted to mention that to people because of the synchronicity that put us together. That was profound in itself. And I did call Katie and I said, you won't believe someone's got this website called Why on Earth. She says, it's not the same spelling, is it? No, I said, no, he's with a Y. She went, she was laughing. But I said, I'm going to put you two together because it would be great. And her documentary is amazing. Uh, her documentary amazing. is absolutely fantastic. And it's something that's quite relatable. So, yeah. Yeah, you two should definitely uh, touch base on there. Probably do your own little podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really looking <laughs> that, forward that's, to that. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And also, you, you're you doing some amazing work, um, Aaron. You also just written a new book called Veriditas, which is uh, which is just out, and it's a brand new book that's out as well. That's right, yep. So Veriditas um, is available uh, in print and as an ebook, and uh, folks can go to veriditasbook.com to find more information and figure out how to get a copy. Um, and, and this book uh, has a very special, deep meaning for all of us living in these times. Uh, the term veriditas, of course, which, you know, is a bit of a tongue twister, yeah. uh, was actually coined by the, the mystic and extraordinary leader, uh, Hildegard von Bingen, about 900 years ago. Wow. And it means the green healing energy of the divine that flows through the plant kingdom so there's a lot of that kind of information and messaging woven into the fabric of this big story. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's such a joy to connect with you guys. And um, I'm not surprised by the synchronicities and the overlaps that we're seeing with our friends and colleagues uh, with all of the work that we're doing. Aaron, so why on earth? I mean, for me, that's a question, a question of why are we as, as hum humanity here on this earth? Why are we doing, what are we doing here? Why we've chosen earth to be on? Um, why, how did you come back with that name? Why on earth? Yeah. So, yeah. So why on earth? So the why on earth community is a, an action oriented educational nonprofit that I co-founded a few years ago with my good friend, Brad Lidge. And uh, it, it was founded on the fabric we created in this other book I wrote called Why on Earth? Get Smarter, Feel Better, Heal the Planet. Wow. And uh, in that book, which is nonfiction, um, I explain why the name and what it really means, right? So this, this name, Why on Earth, with the letter Y, refers to Gen Y, the millennial generation, right? And my, I'm sort of on one end of that. My daughter's right in it. My son is on the other end of that. The other meaning, of course, is the hominin with the word W-H-Y, asking that deeper question, why? What is our why individually and as a society? And then the third layer of meaning in the title refers to this uh, lesser known uh, thing called the Pythagorean why that would have been familiar 
in medieval times to folks as a sort of lesson in morality in a way where all of the little decisions we make day by day through our lives ultimately lead us in very different potential directions, very different potential pathways. So the, the, the Pythagorean why becomes a symbol for the cumulative decision making essentially that we do in our own lives and that we're doing collectively as a society. Wow. Very interesting. Wow, that's mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Obviously, for you, nature is extremely important because we are part of nature. We are one with nature. You have children's books. Terry's got children's books as well. You know, so the lots of synchronicities that's 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 come through. But in terms of miracles, you must have met so many people in your life. You must have had so many miracles and and stories and and opportunities that came about your way. Let let's talk about in terms of how how. It came about and and how this whole new book came about as well yeah it's a it's a it's a big story right like the the book itself is is an epic eco thriller and uh has threads woven through it that include technology that include economics that include unplugging from our technology and from our cities and immersing in nature mm. and and really that include an awakening to a, a deeper one might even say more uh, uh tried and true way of being on the planet going back to the indigenous cultures going back to yeah. the ancient cultures going into the esoteric wisdom that might be around us but we haven't yet connected much to and so there's so much woven together in this story. And as you might imagine, the process of writing it was full of inspiration and really full of listening and receiving messages and intuition from something that was clearly outside of myself, right? And I, I'm convinced that part of the messaging that came through in this story was coming from Mother Earth herself, from Mama Gaia and is meant to be shared with humanity right now in these perilous and momentous times we're living in together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the notion of miracle for me has shown up in a lot of different ways and uh, throughout my whole life, uh, going back to my early childhood. And I'm, I'm really, I'm grateful for that way of experiencing life. Cause I, I know with some of my, my friends, my peers, my colleagues, uh, maybe some folks that, we're both uh, mutually connected to that that's not necessarily a given right it's not necessarily an automatic that one is going to experience the miraculous day in and day out and, I, and i'm kind of convinced that it might actually be for many of us a practice um the result of cultivating gratitude and love and and kindness literally cultivating kindness in our day in and day out experiences even and especially in the long lines at the whatever it is the grocery store perhaps we're in traffic right it's perhaps a, an opportunity we each have every day and as we get better at practicing that who knows what kinds of doors might open for us who knows what kinds of very real magic might become quote unquote normal in our realities no he's right actually it's, it's it, i think when you slow yourself down and and be very present and open, you, the the actual the magic shows itself uh, in in many different ways. So the universe is talking every day, all day, throughout the day. It's whether you're ready, to, you're in that mindful moment to really receive it. And I think when you say people don't, and that's the whole point of I don't know behind your children's books. But my children's books, one's called My Magical Garden, My Magical Tree. We've just started a children's foundation. And it's about keeping the connection and weaving and keeping that connection of Mother Nature in with the children um, and, and, and keeping them, you know, they say magical, but magic is in everything. And Mother Earth is magical. And, and it's for them to have that remember that imprint in their imagination in their brain in their minds in their dna in everything and not to lose that disconnect and 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 that was our form of children but what made you do your children's books because i know that i've had a little bit a little look at them and you're more breaking down to the elements is that correct 
Yeah. So yeah, the, the children's books are, are such a joy to mm -hmm. create and to share. And um, I write them. And uh, my dear friend, Yvonne Casalina, is the artist who puts together the beautiful paintings and drawings. And uh, she is, is such a gifted artist, right? She does portrait work. She does a lot of animals. And in these children's stories, she's uh, painting a number of images showing the adventures of brother and sister as they go through and learn different things. So one is called Celebrating Trees, yeah, which we're working on right now. Uh, the first one we put out is called Celebrating Soil. We did Celebrating Honeybees and also Celebrating Water. water yeah. And in each story, uh, brother and sister uh, have a different ethnicity, right? So each book has a different ethnicity. And not only does the story itself uh, share some magical uh, opportunity and invitation to the kids and their parents, grandparents, teachers, but at the back of the books are a number of resources and suggested activities that uh, the grown-ups can do with the kiddos. So, uh, you know, these are, these are um, full of additional, uh, I guess, value, right, for, for the grown-ups. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And, and really, I mean, it may seem elementary, right, to focus on things like soil and water and honeybees and trees. But actually, mm. these are the fundamental uh, elements and beings that make life possible here on our planet. And so all of our other sophisticated conversations around things like regeneration and sustainability uh, necessarily our conversations about soil and water and pollinators and the living plants and trees. Otherwise, they're probably not as well developed uh, in conversations as they could be. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to put out the children's books. It's a, and a great way to distill down some of the key messages that are found in our, our bigger resources, you know, intended for adult audiences. It's funny you said that because my children's books are in the back of the book, there's an appendix in the back of the book that tells you where the child is emotionally, uh, you know, putting little holistic tools, a lot of tools, information, like you said, but they're books for that parents can use as well. So it's a bit very intertwined with your own and, 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 mm -hmm. and keeping that magic, you know, alive within the children and, and families, really. And um, I think that's another synchronicity that we've just, you know, on fan there when I saw your children's books, like, oh my God, you know, so I thought that was, that was amazing. And, and, you know, especially for the children at this time, but um, you, when you were writing your book, did you write it inside or did you write it outside or did you do both or were you called to certain parts to, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely both. And uh, yeah, the book, the writing of the book uh, was a five-year process. When I was finishing up Why on Earth, um, some, something was showing up that uh, I pretty quickly recognized, wait a minute, this isn't Why on Earth anymore. This is something different. This is actually a story that wants to be told. And so um, like a good librarian, which I think we have to be for ourselves as writers, I jotted those notes down and put them somewhere I know I might be able to find them later. And that kept coming and flowing. And before long, there was a pretty fleshed out outline of a story uh, that, that has become Veriditas over the course of the past five years. And so, yeah, so much of the writing has been done out in the mountains with the trees. Uh, sometimes it's even done in, in more of a ceremonial manner, not that that's the intention, Right. But that yeah, yeah, opening yeah. the space has allowed certain information and insight to flow in uh, at, you know, in retrospect at very needed times. And uh, last fall, I was fortunate to be able to spend something like six weeks on and off at some beautiful healing hot springs in southern Colorado called Joyful Journey. Yeah. And so on a daily basis, I was waking up and uh, connecting with the sun and soaking in the sacred waters and then writing and editing and writing and editing, you know, hours and hours at the computer. 
but uh, that was that was a wonderful way to connect in with Mother Nature and her elements while also, you know, taking care of my body, which was certainly feeling the impacts of the hundreds and hundreds of hours at the desk with the computer. So this book is fiction, correct? So, yeah, we're we're not. I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it's, feel fiction so, to me. Yeah, energetically, it's. Yeah. it's I, I, so for me, I don't I, know. I want because you had to do a lot of research, a lot of learning with with its with with your own self, but also research where they'd be from Mother Earth, research from indigenous people, research from religions' point of view. You had to do to be able to fulfill whatever aspects it has to fulfill well, i don't message, want to call it fiction no, but, but the message the message they're trying to bring across it. within this yeah book. i mean it's 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 because it starts off in new york and it, and it moves off to colorado but just just let's talk through that that old story in terms of in terms of the the research and and the knowledge that that you had to put in this book yeah yeah no i i, I really appreciate the question and it's a lot of fun to reflect on this so <laughs> You know, this this story Veriditas is loaded and many of my friends who have read the book have said to me something like, wow, this is kind of like science fiction, isn't it? Or, or more so when they just start reading the book or have heard about the book. And I say to them, well, it's more like science reality than science fiction. And uh, in fact, there's so much woven into this story that is grounded in history and anthropology and cultural knowledge of a variety of traditions in, and, and advanced science and technology are discussed uh, in a pretty meaningful way in the book. Um, of course, the storyline itself is a bit made up, but uh, there's quite a bit of uh, familiar scenes and even people, friends of mine in very real farms and locations in the wilderness that these characters go to to visit to have their kind of opening of awareness as uh, Brigitte Sophia, the protagonist, has basically fled New York City yeah. and mm -hmm. fled her East Coast yeah. entrepreneurial computer science milieu and because she has cracked the code to deep artificial intelligence, very powerful technology, she's literally being chased by these paramilitary operatives with drones overhead and has to run through Central Park, get on a subway in the nick of time, get on a plane, flies out to Denver, and there uh, meets up with a friend of a friend, a guy she does not really like at first called Leo, you know how love stories go. And uh, she has to ditch her technology and go off grid and trust this guy uh, because of her perilous situation. And he starts to bring her to some of his friends' farms, including Elk Run Farm right outside Boulder, where I'm sitting at the moment recording this from our Why on Earth community offices. Oh, wow. And uh, he, they end up going to Sustainable Settings Biodynamic Ranch out near Aspen, which is one of the biodynamic agricultural headquarters in the Rocky Mountain West with amazing uh, practices underway and all kinds of other farmers and educators being uh, taught basically, being uh, shown how to use these practices in the day to day. And so when it's interesting to me, this, this word magic, right? Because what does it really mean? And mm -hmm. when we're working with the biodynamics, when we're working with the alchemical land medicines when we're stirring in the sacred spring waters in a ceremonial manner to bring additional life force into the landscape and to bring additional billions of beneficial microorganisms into the soil well yeah that that seems like magic in some respects and of course we're living in a time where there is more and more science kind of catching up to the awesome complexity and reality of the fun existing phenomenal yeah. cosmology that we're a part of. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe kind of sort of like a science fiction story, but it's actually a uh, science reality. And it's actually a bit of a documentary featuring some amazing people and places that uh, I hope many of your audience will have the opportunity to, to visit and or connect with through, through the internet. Why, why do you think that you were called spiritually to write this book? 
you know what 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 do you think came through for you what, what was calling you or who was calling you yeah <laughs> why i guess would be um it's pretty clear to me i'm pretty convinced that that we are alive right now all of us uh who are alive right now are alive in a most extraordinary moment in the human story the human evolution mm. and the consciousness and it seems that in this living loving cosmology we're part of, that there may be some forces much greater than we are who would like to see us kind of make it through this difficult time um not only because there's a very hopeful impulse in the possibility of the evolution of consciousness, but also because when we humans are at this point in our development where yeah. uh, our technical capabilities have us developing poisons and toxins and weapons that can cause immense damage to the biosphere, clearly that's something we, we want to evolve past and, uh, and grow up through and when we have that kind of potentially destructive power you know we really want to have a grounded sense of responsibility and stewardship which in many of our indigenous traditions are known to be the fundamental original instructions that we humans have received way back in time and have maintained through different cultural lineages but unfortunately in our modern empire oriented uh, social milieu and cultural milieu, many of us have been disconnected from that reality and from that knowledge, right? And so one of the impulses of this story of Veriditas is a, is a prayer and an invitation to reconnect with those truths. And uh, so, yeah, and, and in terms of, um, you know, where it's coming from and, and who it's coming from, that, you know, that, that verges on some of the very personal processes I experienced as an author, but it, it became clear to me in the process of writing Veriditas that I was really uh, more a vessel for, for Mama Gaia, for Mother Nature to speak to humanity, and that the, these weren't just thoughts originating from my mind. Instead, they were uh, words flowing through my heart, coming from something outside of myself, the, the little I. Did you have, should we talk through some of the emotions that came up for you as well? Because there must have been some emotions during writing the book, but also experiencing it, whether it be from an early age, whether it be through your, your teenage years, or whether it be through as an adult now, in terms of whatever emotions you had, that came up for you while doing this book? Wow, yeah, I love your question. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a deep question. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I, I would imagine some of your audience would appreciate that uh, being a quintuple Scorpio uh, oh. means I often, you know, talk openly about my emotions, not because I don't want to, it's just not really in my inclination or nature to do so, generally speaking. But uh, yeah, you know, I have had a lot of different emotions in the process of writing and editing and worked with an amazing team. And, you know, before we started recording, mentioned that uh, the cover itself is loaded with symbol yeah. and cipher coded messages using a sp specific uh, cipher system that goes back centuries. Uh, and, and this was a collaborative design project with my son, Hunter and a, an amazing graphic designer named Jake that I've worked with for many years now. And so, you know, that process, along with the editing process of the writing itself, included many people. And uh, the entire time, right, it was my sense of purpose and duty that this thing needed to get done. And it's not, you know, it's not a short book, so it, it took a long while. And there were certainly days where I felt like, my goodness, is this ever going to get finished? So there was an emotion of, you know, maybe uh, exhaustion or, or even uh, some dismay when it felt like, wow, you know, th this thing is, is taking so much longer than I thought it would. Um, and especially when we ended up cutting out 200 pages, right? 
And, uh, you know, that editing process can be painful at times, but, but really those kinds of emotions pale in comparison to the overwhelming emotions of joy and hope and light. And I, there were so many days where I sat and, and that took discipline, like telling your little, you know, little, a little kid, you got to come in, you can't play outside. You got to sit right here, sit still mm. and focus. And that's how it felt many of the days. But uh, once I did that, after the three, four or five hours I could spend at the computer and I would go back outside and connect with the sky and listen to the birds and touch the ground and the soil and watch the pollinators with the flowers and would get almost overwhelmed by this, this feeling of, of jubilation, uh, this feeling of, of victory, this feeling of, of of healing that is at our fingertips as humans. But I also think that it might've took you five years and a long time, but I think it was definitely put out on time. I, I it, think people might not have received it as well before. Whereas now I think it's on. There's a lot of awakening. No, but I think he's on time. He, he so, probably, we think we're not. And we're, you know, that's a programming I think of society that, you know, it's like our new children's foundation. Got to do this. Got to get it out now. Got to. Do... But sometimes you got to land when that time is right. And I think his book is on point, really. Yeah, I agree. It's yeah, and, it's a time yeah. where people are knowing they're missing stuff. That the the things that they buy every day, uh, your bags, your clothes, whatever you know, your commodities are not filling that gap anymore. You know, they're trying everything. It's not filling. And and by this writing this book of this connection with nature is like, that's what we're missing. Yeah, I think the book provides a, a big wide open invitation mm. to all of us to uh, pause and to connect with something that perhaps we've lost some connection with. And and in so doing, we, we have an opportunity right at our fingertips to experience this awesome joy, this awesome sense of the, the tremendousness of reality, the tremendousness of the life force that animates this living planet we all share, and, and the profound opportunity for real deep healing that we all have in our own lives. So it's, it's really, a, you know, the invitation's there, the door is open, and it's really a matter of what we're individually choosing to say yes to. And one of the fun things about this being presented in the form of a story is that it's it's also a really fun and entertaining adventure, right? And uh, it's not just, you know, you're not slogging through some dense um, nonfiction or, or scientific reporting or anything like that. No, it's very different. It's a very different kind of feeling and I think has a, a flow that is really enjoyable uh, to experience. So would you say it's it's a story that's quite re relatable for a lot of people probably, and it's an easier read where someone would be able to understand Yeah, so it's it not seriously more... spiritual Correct. or anything that anyone... That's right. There's a deep it, meaning yeah. behind it, but it kind of opens up your, your mind to different aspects of what our world is about. I think it probably has a broader reading, I think, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. Right. And, um, and and this was intended from the get go, but also I think was accomplished uh, in a, an even more profound way because of the amazing editors who were involved in the process of editing the book and David Aretha and uh, Andrea von Ricken and uh, Charmaine uh, Boudreau and uh, Brad Lidge was heavily involved. My sweetheart, Caressa Ayers was heavily involved in the process. And so yeah, it, it took a village, but I think what uh, we ended up with in the final result is a very readable book that is, although loaded, not uh, too heavy. And uh, we had a fun little gathering at the farm a couple months ago, and my mom got up and she spoke and she said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to understand this, but I'm, I think she said, but I'm proud of you. And I, and then I said, well, look, if, if you don't understand it, it means I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, there, there's a very um, intentional uh, effort to present a, a number of really important uh, themes and threads, but in a way 
that is very easy for a, a general public audience uh, to digest and to enjoy. And that said, those those of us who have more expertise in, in different disciplines, I think are gonna have a lot of fun as well, right? Whether it's technology or herbal medicine or history, uh, or even folks who like to decipher cipher codes, right? There's a bit of a Dan Brown kind of Da Vinci oh. code feel in all of this too. Uh, as, as there is sort of a, clan of the cave bears and fifth sacred thing uh, feel as well. So there's there really is something something for just about anybody and everybody. And that's intentional because it the message that is coming through this yeah, for story, message for humanity. Yeah. So would you say that, first of all, this book has got a certain vibration to it because it took quite a bit of, of people on the same wavelength and the same vibration to be able to kind of put it together? Mm. um because you 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 mentioned there's some a couple of key people involved in terms of whether from an editing point of view whether you, your son well, it has to be don't you think you know, like so, a, the energy because the person reading it's going to absorb that energy correct so that that's very interesting because i would say that the the folks who were intimately in, involved in that process were not necessarily all of a like mind and uh part that i think that's part of why the book is better now than it was when I originally drafted it. Um, it's it's one that has now many different perspectives kind of woven into its fabric. And yes, I, I do think the book has a certain vibration, uh, but it's I think it has its own vibration. It's not necessarily the vibration of any particular person. I agree, it, Scotty. But it's the vibration yeah. really of of our Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. and where she i think is inviting us to go as a species mm. i love it yeah, i absolutely I, love it yeah, yeah it's it, it's it's i mean we haven't i'm going to be honest you know we, we i heard your interviews on youtube and stuff like that we you know i only touched base with you this week i only found out this week but we will read the book i mean because it does feel like it's pulling energetically to read it but also i think it would answer a lot of questions in terms of you know, Mother Earth, our connection with Mother Earth, why we are uh, the different, I don't know if it's got different portals or, or energy fields on this planet in terms of the way it is, the way you describe it with regards to sacred geometry and and and, and codes to be able to understand what our planet is about and, and why things are oh. the way it is. I think that's, that's, that's fascinating, you know, because I think there's a lot of research that you've done to be able to, to bring this across and, and knowledge um, which is absolutely amazing, Aaron. I mean, I take my hat off for you because, it, you know, you're saying it took five years, but... Yeah, a lot of people would, would have I, lost you know, interest in correct, five years. You know, you had, obviously had a mission and the universe, whatever you want to call it, no, they trusted gave you and it. trusted you and gave you this gift to say, you know, he's going to be able to deliver it. He's going to be able to get it out there to be able to, to do it. So you should be immensely proud for, yeah. for what you've put out there because... I think it will help so many people on this on this planet, is especially where we are today, and, um, and yeah. how we feel as as humans. And I think also as parents to read it for, yeah. to help their children, the children. Yeah, 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 indeed, yeah. I think that uh, yeah, that all of that is is in this book, and uh, yeah, and and there is this sense of uh, uh, joy when when I got to this final moment a few weeks ago when it was like okay the final you know after a whole year of editing with the editing team uh and I was still writing during that process right so you're shifting all all around the book uh I earlier this summer uh, took the time to read through the whole thing beginning to end patiently as if I had encountered wow. this first time right and and found a whole lot of additional things polishing little grammatical things all kinds of things and so at the very end of the process of incorporating all those final edits i i went outside and sat in the flower patch right outside here and had the most gosh it was almost a strangely almost psychedelic experience I, it was as if i could see the flowers opening up and there were suddenly all these pollinators and ants walking right under my chair. And it was as if it was as if life itself was so joyful that mm -hmm. this 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 thing that they had been 
sharing with me that they had been asking me to share out in the form of a book was on, well on its way now. And, and so, you know, that could have just been my own uh, weird little moment after an extra cup of coffee or something. I'll, I'll admit that. But I, I think what I experienced uh, or what I take and have in my heart now is an experience of, of uh, the, the joy that was felt by the living environment, the creatures all right around here. And look, I think something similar showed up at the beginning of COVID when we began to shut down and quiet down and drive less and stay put. I noticed it seemed like the bird song was more joyful. It seemed like life itself was somehow breathing a big sigh of relief and saying, oh, yes. thank goodness, thank goodness yeah. it's happening. And uh, so I just I, I wonder now what really is possible? What really are we capable of together in, in these next few years in the healing of this planet at a time when we are faced with so much intense, complex systemic risk? Yeah. And it seems that w there is a whole lot we can do in relatively short order. It's only a matter of how many of us awaken to the reality and say yes to taking action. And so that is fundamentally the sense of purpose behind the book and behind the work that we're doing at the Why on Earth community. But I think also, um, you know, when you, you had that moment, you know, outside in nature, it, 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 I've had that moment as well a few times. Um, have you? Yes. And and to me, it happened on a very special island here, Santa Cruz Island as well, where you just felt you'd gone onto a Disney island. It was the most unique experience. It's like a portal that opened that up. That opened up, we stepped into it. And it wasn't just us that felt that. There was a few of us that were there, and then Katie was there from her. And why not? She's deeply connected to on the same path as us. But I, I think, this is what I feel, is that's what it really is like but i think through society and education the dulling of the senses we we that's what it's really like and we don't see it that way it's been a di bit discontorted with ourselves uh, and really is meant to be seen the way that that flash moments come that's what i think and i yeah. think get the children young yeah, I'm with you parents, on that. They will capture and be in that magical world that is I'm, actually there. Because yeah. we are part of nature. We are one But it's nature. there. I think that's really what it's, it's like. There. I think we've had a yeah, a, a dimming of the of that that intuitive third eye, whatever you want to call it. But I think really that's that's the that, reality. And actually. I think people that that I'm not pushing Disney at all because, you know, but anyone that does those cartoons that brought all that nature to life must have known that and felt that really to do that in the first place all them years ago. And I, I think we just need to get back into the eating of the plants and the plant medicine and, you know, the Ayurvedics and the homeopathy and flower remedies and the whole thing and how we treat animals. Then we will awaken to that very quickly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, in the story, there's a recognition and exploration of the great sadness, how how we got to where we are through the course of civilizing, quote unquote, civilizing history. And what that brings us to is this opportunity for the great healing. Mm -hmm. And as we choose to say yes and go through that healing, it, it opens the doorway to the great joy. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm part Mohawk through my father's oh, with my relatives for Akwesasne and the Haudenosaunee uh, life ways. I was just on the phone with my dear friend Gawen Yost earlier today. Uh, there, there is this, this understanding that the world is absolutely magical. Yeah. And it is the, the impulse of empire building that seems to want to uh, squash that or dampen that or diminish that or eliminate that. Yeah. And we need to understand that for what it is. And there's plenty of history to support this viewpoint. And, you know, I, as a, as a young child, I had a, a magical and magnificent experience in the 
forests of the Pacific Northwest along the coast of the Olympic Peninsula. And I was only about five years old. And when I share this story with different people, you know, in certain settings, I will have to say things like, yeah, it might have just been a childhood fantasy. Or, you know, the, the joke comes up, who knows what my parents were smoking or whatever. Mm. But when I talk with my indigenous friends and relatives, wow, they, they understand, they say, oh, no, that's that's totally real. We, we know all about this. Wow. And and so I think what's really at play here for many of us is that some of us have access to certain domains of knowledge and others have been cut off. Correct. Correct. And so we many of us do not actually have a complete view and understanding of what's right. happening in our reality. So this is another one of these invitations. And, and yeah, Terry, I think you're you're right on in terms of the importance of the young children and the parents, uh, the responsibility we have uh, to allow the children the time in the woods by the creek, by yeah. the pond with the critters mm -hmm. uh, to have those really magical experiences. And to, to read the energy of, of Mother Nature, to read yeah. the energy of the trees. I know people think, oh, that's just, it's not. You can hear what the tree says. This is so true. And look, I, I have, you know, on, on the Why on Earth Community podcast, I, I have the opportunity to interview all kinds of really extraordinary people, scientists, business leaders, authors, indigenous wisdom keepers, youth activists, farmers, herbalists, and so on. And one of the projects we're doing with the Why on Earth community this coming year is, is launching an herbal resource hub, an wow. interactive mapping resource, so that all over the place we can easily find those herbal farms, those herbal apothecaries, those herbal practitioners to more readily connect to those very special plant medicines that Hildegard knew all about when she coined this term yeah. veriditas. And, uh, and yeah, with this set of uh, guests on our podcast, you know, there are some who are so uh, academic and uh, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? Um, secular in, in their understanding of the world. And I joke with a very good friend of mine who's one of, one of the intellectually brightest people I know, Al is his name. I say, look, if, if we're not experiencing an awesome sense of magic in in the universe in reality either one of two things is happening one is we're not very good at mathematics which is totally possible not all of us are gifted that way and the other is we're not really paying attention mm. and i think that that's probably what's explaining a lot of this for a lot of us uh, when we're locked into our kind of day-to-day, -day, our careers, our busyness, our so all the social media alarms going off and so on, I think it's very easy to be distracted from and not paying attention to this magical, awesome, living reality that is nature. And our ancestors, by definition, had a much more intimate relationship yeah. with this uh, just because of the way life was. Mm. And so it, it's, it's in a sense, our birthright to have this intimate connection. And, and I think that it is time for many of us, millions of us, to reclaim this birthright and to experience the awesome magic that is all around us right now in this reality. That's, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Really beautiful, Aaron. If there's one thing you want to leave our audience with, what would that be? Yeah, before we go, one message to them. Well, connect with the soil and the plants as much as you're able. And uh, yeah, check out this book. Check out this story, Veriditas. It, it might just change your life. Mm, thank you. Aaron, thank you so much for your time. I love this interview. Mm. Um, Feel free to get in contact with us at info at themagicalmedicalspodcast.com. That's info at themagicalmedicalspodcast.com. Aaron, thank you so much for your time. It was absolutely a pleasure talking to you today. Likewise. Thank you, buddy. And thank you, Terry. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you.